tons of people who walk by on the sidewalk. They're sticking their face up against the glass. They want to know what's going on in here. People come into the store and they're just drawn right into the studio. They want to see every nook and cranny. They want to know what it is that we do. They want to know if they can do it. Can I make a teapot today? <laughs> That's always the question. This uh, Clay Arts Centre is known all across North America and beyond now. I heard about this shop from my friend Richard, who, who, who used to live in Dublin. It is unique in this country. As far as we know, it is the only guild-owned and operated uh, Clay Arts Centre in the country. It's turned out to be really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. My name's Sandy Harquill and I'm a professional potter at the London Clay Arts Centre. I'm Sarah Merritt. I am the manager of the Old East Village Business Improvement Area. My name is Darlene Pratt. I am the current president of the London Potters Guild. My name is Greg Gillies and I'm the designer and project manager for the London Clay Arts Centre. Well, the original plan started in the year 2000, but uh, we weren't actually able to purchase a building until March of 2008. Before the Clay Arts Centre acquired the building, this was one of the most problematic and neglected buildings on the whole commercial corridor. There were holes in the roofs where the squirrels had dug their way in, pigeons living everywhere. The whole place was covered in cheap insulating foam. There was a, a, an incredible leak in the ceiling here on the second floor. <laughs> How long did this take? The building uh, was done in four stages over about five years. The first of which started uh, shortly after we purchased the building in March 2008, and so that was renovating the first floor of the space. The next phase was putting in the addition at the north end with the lift. Phase three was then restoring the facade. And then the fourth phase was doing the second floor. And so that was finished in the spring of 2013. So with the second floor coming online for our programming, what we've been able to do is pretty much structure the second floor to be all our revenue generating programming. So that means classes, and we have anywhere from 10 to 13 classes a week that we run in this space. We're able to run concurrent classes, so there are two classroom spaces, the one that's direct be directly behind me, as well as a hand building space back a little bit farther to the south. Um, and we have rental spaces for artists and the first floor of course is all our membership. So our membership now has about, I would say about 800 square feet of space or more to be able to use, uh, to use the wheels and to hand build. And our kilns are downstairs, uh, the glazed kitchen is downstairs and of course the store. So uh, it's quite a robust facility that manages all kinds of different activities going on simultaneously. So quite a feat. There's so many features that I love about this building. I love the hardwood floors that have been restored. The beautiful historic features, for sure. Those fantastic uh, stained glass windows that you see downstairs. Another really interesting feature is the, uh, the old street light. It kind of adds to the overall ambiance of the space. I think this is my favorite interior space, the members lounge on the second floor. I really like the exposed brick. The restored facade is just gorgeous. This heritage building is the best example of heritage restoration for a commercial building in the whole of London. It's absolutely exquisite and it's had the effect of encouraging other people in the area to also look at refurbishing their buildings. It's become a bit of a teaching site for renewable energy um, with the fact that they put the geothermal energy uh, into the building. What will happen in terms of the building is it will, to some extent, move into the background. But at this point, it, the focus is really about building our programming and building the community and building the creativity and artistry of our members. The London Potters Guild has a reputation already across the province, if not across the country. Uh, more and more people are hearing about us and certainly we have people calling us all the time saying, you know, can we come and see that space? How did you do it? Can you give us some tips and tricks? And uh, the biggest tip and trick is finding the right group of people, the right synergies, the right energy and skill sets and, uh, you know, real staying power to make this happen. It has been a long journey, but it has been a fantastically rewarding journey.
Thanks for taking the time to learn about London Clay Arts Centre virtually. I hope you'll take the opportunity to come and see us actually at 664 Dundas Street in London, Ontario.